Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this lesson on simplification and fractions and exponents. Exponents. Welcome to this lesson on a public holiday. I hope that you're joining me. I hope that you're joining me today and that you haven't decided to just take off the whole day. It's fine if you have, it's not a problem. Um, but if you have, then I hope that you are watching this. Oh, I see. I hope that you're watching this um, or that you will watch this later. Right, so we've been learning about factorization and we've been learning about grouping and um, we've been looking at sum and difference of squares, the sum and difference of squares. We've been learning about grouping. We've been learning about taking out a common factor and we've done trinomials. Now we're going to use this information that we've been using to simplify some fractions and then depending on the time we're going to look at um, exponent laws and move on to that. So let's get started. So they're asking us to simplify this. So when you simplify it, you're not expecting to, you're not going to have an equal zero. You're not solving for either A or B. You just want to make this look prettier. Okay. So obviously here yeah, we need a common denominator because you cannot add these unless they are they have the same denominator. So both 5 and 10 can go into 10. So I am going to put a common denominator of 10. 10 goes, 5 goes into two, 10 twice. So we go 2 times whatever the numerator is, which is A minus B plus 10 into 10 is 1, so it's going to be 1 times whatever this numerator is, and it's B minus A. And I would honestly suggest that it doesn't matter if this is a plus or minus, I would always put everything in the different fractions numerators. Okay, let me try again. I would always put the numerators of the different fractions in brackets so that it's easy to separate them out. And also what's important about that is that if this is a minus, then you'll be, have been in such a good habit of doing this that you won't make a mistake. So always put whatever's in the numerator in brackets to help you. Right, so let's multiply this out. So 2 times a is 2a. 2 times minus b is minus 2b plus b. And a plus times a minus is a minus a all over 10. And then all we're going to do is add our like terms. So we get 2a minus a is just an a, and we got minus 2b plus b is minus b all over 10. And there you go. So that's really easy um, simplification of fraction. Just really helping you remember that you needed to get a common denominator before you could add these. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so here we've got 2a, we've got 2a squared minus 3b squared, and we've got 3b, and we've got 3b, 6ab, and 4a. So again, in order for us to be able to add and subtract or do anything with these numerators, we need the denominator to be common. So what we need to think about is what can 3, 6, and 4 go all into? Okay, so there's one way to do this. The one way to do it is to multiply the denominators. So 3 times 6 is 18 times by 4 is a really big number. The other way is to think about what factors 3 goes into. What are the multiples of 3? So I'm going to do it slowly just so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. I'm not going further than that. The multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12. That's quite convenient. And the multiples of 6 are 6, 12. Yay! So we can see that all of these numbers go into 12. So therefore my common denominator for all of this is going to be 12. And now I need to think about my letters. And that's really easy because we need to have all that it's included, okay? So it's obviously a, b. We don't have to say a squared and b squared because they're two a's and they're two b's, yeah? We only have to realize that the biggest exponent here is 1. So the biggest exponent for b has to be 1. The biggest exponent for a is 1. And over there is 1, so therefore that has to be 1 as well. So we don't have to worry about anything bigger than that. Now we're going to do this nice and slowly. We're going to divide the denominator, this denominator 3b, into this. 
and then whatever's left we're going to multiply by 2a. So what am I really doing? I'm going 12ab divided by 3b, okay? So when I do that, the b cancels with the b and 3 goes into 12 four times. I'm left with 4a. So that is what happens when we divide 3b into 12ab. So we're left with 4a and then we multiply it with this numerator. Okay, minus. We always take out that. Now remember, everything above a fraction is effectively one number. So the whole of this, everything that's above this line here is effectively one number. So we can put it in a big bracket, okay? So again, to make it easy for ourselves, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go 12AB divided by 6AB. Okay, I'm dividing 6AB into 12AB. So that's nice because we can cancel that with that and I cancel that with that and you're left with 2. So now I'm going to multiply this 2 with everything that's above the 6AB. So it becomes 2 times 2A squared minus 3B squared. And did you notice that I kept this sign? That sign there is over here. Okay, we haven't changed it to a plus. Right, now plus. Again, we're going to go 12AB divided by 4A. And grade 10 says nothing embarrassing about doing this on the side of the page. In fact, I strongly urge you to do this on the side of your page if you get these wrong. Because until you can do this very easily in your head, and sometimes it's not that easy to do in your head, it's better to write it down and make sure you get it right than not sure you're working and get it wrong, okay? Maths is all about showing your work and there's nothing wrong with showing your working. Okay, so this cancels with that and 4 goes into 12 3 times, so we're left with 3b, all right? So therefore we've got 3b multiplied by 3b, okay? Now we just have to multiply the brackets and see what we get. So 4 times 2 is 8 and a times a is a squared minus now, minus 2 times by the first term is 2 times 2 is 4, and that's a squared. And then a minus times a minus is a plus. 2 times 3 is 6b squared, plus 3 times 3 is 9, and b times b is b squared, all over 12ab. Right, so now we need to add up our like terms. So 8 a squared minus 4a squared gives me 4a squared plus 6b squared plus 9b squared is 15b squared all over 12ab and that is the answer there's nothing more that we can do there if this had been a 16 and this had been a minus then we would have the difference of two squares but it's not so we are done and please don't think oh well you can cancel this a with one of those and this a with one of those no this whole thing is one number so you can't cancel part of this number out okay that's like counting let's say the number is 156 and going, oh, if I divide that by 5, I can cancel these numbers. No, you cannot do that. That is one whole number, okay? That is not right. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, so now we're getting to something a bit more interesting. We've got x minus 1 plus 3 over x squared minus 1, and this is x squared plus x, okay? So now if we follow the examples of what we did before, we would be tempted to go, well, that means we have to take our x squared plus x, and we need to multiply it by x squared minus 1 to find out a common denominator, okay? And we'd multiply it out, and we'd end up with x to the 4 plus dot, 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 and it'd be horrible. But what we can do is use the information that we've already gained from this factorization section. Let's see if we can factorize these denominators. Let's see if we can make them easier. Do you see I could take out a common factor here of x? Okay, and what are we left with? We're left with x plus 1. Okay, and what's at the top? x minus 1, because I haven't changed it. Plus, yeah, we've got 3 over this is the difference of two squares. This is a perfect square. And this here is just a one, which is a perfect square. And they're separated by minus. So that is actually the difference between two squares. So I can write that as x 
minus one, x plus one. So do you agree that now, hang on, let me just show you an example. If I had one over two plus one over three plus one over four, one of the ways that I could find out their denominator is I could go two times three is six and six times four is 24. So I could multiply the denominators to find a denominator that all three numbers are going. Two goes into 24, 12 times, plus three goes into 24, eight times, plus four goes into 24, six times. And immediately we'd end up a number with something that we can factor out. So, okay, it works out to be that's 24, that's 20, that's 26. So that ends up being 13 over 12. So we can simplify it further, but do you agree that just by multiplying these numbers, we could find one number that all three can go into? Now we're going to do exactly the same here. We're going to go, well, there's an x here, there's an x plus 1, and there's an x minus 1. We're not going to write the x plus 1 again because it's already been covered over here. Okay, so it's x, x plus 1, and x minus 1. Right, so now let's say, now what we're doing is we're dividing this denominator into this denominator. Okay, so we're doing exactly what we did before. We went, we're going x, x plus 1, x minus 1, all over x, x plus 1, what we're doing is we're dividing this denominator here into the big one. And what can we do? We can cancel this with this and that with that. And what are we left with? We're left with this bracket here, which is x minus 1, multiplied by the numerator, x minus 1. Plus, okay, now we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to divide this denominator into the big one. Okay, so we're going to go x, x plus 1, x minus 1, all divided by this dude here, which is x plus 1, x minus 1. So that cancels with that, and that cancels with that, and you lift with x, so that becomes plus 3x. Okay, now I'm still not going to multiply this out, because remember the whole point about this is it needs to simplify. It needs to simplify. So we're going to write, okay, we can multiply this. Though. So we're going to use FOIL. Remember FOIL? So we're going to go first with the first is x squared. Out is, is x times minus 1 is minus x. In is, is minus x. And last, so minus times minus is plus 1 plus 3x. Sorry. All over x, x plus 1, x minus 1. So what do we have? Now we need to add up our like terms. Okay, we've got x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x plus 3x is plus x plus 1 all over x, x plus 1 x minus 1. And that dude there is not factorizable. So you are finished. You are done with your answer. Okay, so there you can see how we've used our knowledge of difference of two squares and our knowledge of taking our common factors to find a common denominator, lowest common denominator that we can use in the sum. Okay, so we're going to do another example. Sure. Okay. So let's do look at this one. Yeah, we've got x minus 2 over x minus 1 plus x minus 1 over 2 minus x. Okay, so I'm thinking they must do something with that because x is in the wrong place. Plus 3x minus 5 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, so again, I need a lowest common denominator. Agreed? So what I need to do is and I need to factorize this because this thing here is a trinomial, right? So we've got x squared minus 3x plus 2, but we know how to factorize this. Okay, the coefficient of x squared is 1, so this is going to be an x 
and this is going to be x. This plus sign here tells us that both the signs are the same and they're both minus. And the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. Okay, so do you agree I could rewrite this as going x minus 2 over x minus 1 plus x minus 1 over 2 minus x plus 3x minus 5 all over x minus 2x minus 1. Well, that's looking pretty because do you see that that's x minus 1 and that's x minus 1? And these are very similar, except that this dude here is 2 minus x and this is x minus 2. So do you remember the thing that we called the switch round? Where we could say that 2 minus x is exactly the same as minus x minus 2. In other words, if I multiply this by a minus sign, then I can swap this around to be in the order that I want it to be in. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So this becomes x minus 2 over x minus 1 plus x minus 1 over minus x minus 2 plus 3x minus 5 all over x minus 2 x minus 1. Okay, so do you agree therefore I can take out a common denominator of x minus 2 x minus 1. We don't have to worry about that minus because we're going to fix it now. Okay, so how are we going to fix it? Well, do you agree that a plus times a minus is a minus? So I'm going to change this to a minus. Okay, now we can do this. x minus 1 divided into this leaves me with what? It leaves me with x minus 2. So if I can write x minus 2 times by the numerator of x minus 2 minus x minus 2 into this leaves you with x minus 1. So you're left with x minus 1 times by the numerator of x minus 1 plus this whole thing is exactly the same as that, so they cancel each other out, and all I'm left with is the numerator of 3x minus 5. Sure, so now what do I need to do? I need to multiply at the top and see if I get a nice trinomial or something. So let's do that. x times x is x squared. Remember we're using FOIL. Oopsie, let me just go back. We're using FOIL. So x times x is x squared, then we've got outer, so it becomes minus 2x, inners, which is minus 2x, last, which is plus 4, minus. And here again, I suggest that you leave the minus on the outside and multiply these two brackets first before you go and get rid of this minus. Okay, we'll multiply it in. So x times x is x squared, x times minus 1 is minus x, that becomes minus x, and that becomes plus 1. And then we've got plus 3x minus 5 all over x minus 2, x minus 1. Now obviously you guys would carry on writing below, but because I don't have space below, I am going to write next to it. Okay, so I need to make this look pretty. So I'm going to write it out as x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x, okay, plus 4, minus x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 3x minus 5 all over x minus 2x minus 1 which equals. Okay, so now we need to get rid of this, this minus for the brackets and we need to add some like terms. We might as well do that now. So what x squared minus 4x plus 3x is minus x plus 4 minus 5 is minus 1 and then we need to multiply in this bracket. So minus times a plus is minus x squared. Minus times minus is a plus 2x. Minus times a plus is a minus 1 all over x minus 2, x minus 1. These cancel. How nice is that? And what are we left with? We're left with 
2x minus x is x, minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2, all over x minus 2, x minus 1. So do you see that this whole numerator is equal to this whole part of this denominator? So we can cancel the whole of this out. And now a lot of my students would write therefore that the answer is x minus 1, but you've got to remember that when we cancel, we're actually dividing. So we're saying this divided by this is 1. So our answer is 1 over x minus 1. Sure, so that's actually a very nice question because we had a trinomial you had to factorize over there. We had a switch around that we had to take take care of. We had brackets with minuses we had to multiply in. So it was actually a very nice question. And then we had final cancelling. Good. Okay. Grade 10s, again, if you're watching this video and you are finding out that you might be struggling with what I've done because I did it too quickly, obviously you can re-watch the video. You can just go press on the link that you used to get here and you will get a, a repeat of the video. You can watch it again. Also, what I suggest you do is that a good revision technique would be to play this video and then when it comes up with the screen, it just gives you the question. Pause the video and then copy down the question and then try it for yourself. Because sitting watching me doing it and going, yeah, 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 okay, you know what I'm doing, you know what I'm doing, is not the same as you doing it yourself. And you doing it yourself actually makes a huge difference and it actually is going to ensure that you do better in the exam. So please make sure you do that. Right. Right, next one. Okay, so this is quite nice because that is the sum and difference of two cubes. Hmm. Okay, so we've got 3 plus a minus a cubed minus a all over 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Okay, 8 minus a cubed and a minus 2. Okay, so let's think about the sum and difference of two cubes. The way it works is a cubed and it's minus, right? My, okay, so it becomes a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b. And then you square the first term, it's a squared. You swap the sign, so it's plus a b, okay? And then you go plus b squared, right? Okay, so then let's just write that out and see if we can sort out that. So it becomes 3 plus a. 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Let's see if we can have something nice to that. Minus a cubed. And let's factorize this into the difference, sum and difference of two cubes. That becomes 2 minus a. Then it becomes 2 squared is 4. Swap the sign, so it's a plus. These are multiplied together, it's 2a, and then that is squared, so plus a squared. Oh, that looks nice. Minus a over a minus 2. So why does that look nice? That looks nice because that is identical to that. Yay! So we can see that we're looking somewhere at the writing for a common denominator. But do you see that this dude here is the same as this one, except that this is 2 minus a and this is a minus 2. So obviously we need to do a switch round. And it's probably easy to do the switch round over here. So I'm going to do it and I'm actually doing the same line. I'm going to make that um, change that to become plus because a minus times a minus is a plus and this becomes 2 minus a. Okay, so now we can do the common denominator. So therefore, the lowest common denominator, do you agree, is this thing. Because 4 plus 2a plus a squared goes into all of that, and 2 minus a goes into all of that. So therefore, we've got 2 minus a, 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Okay, so if we divide this into the denominator, we're left with this 2 minus a. So you're left with 2 minus a, multiplied by the numerator of 3 plus a minus a cubed, but this is identical to that, so there's nothing we need to multiply this by, plus 2 minus a is going to be divided into this, cancels with this, but you're left with this horrible thing, so it becomes 4 plus 2a plus a squared, all multiplied by a. 
Okay, so now what do we need to do? We need to multiply the brackets, okay? So again, we're going to be using FOIL. So it's first with first, two times three is six. Then it is outers, two times A is two A. This becomes minus three A, and this becomes minus A squared, minus A cubed, plus, now this we need to multiply it with that, right? So it becomes plus 4a plus 2a squared plus a cubed all over 2 minus a, 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Right, so let's add our like terms. We've got 6 here, and that's the only number, so let's leave it as a 6. We've got 2a minus 3a is minus a, plus 4a is 3a, so that's plus 3a. Then we've got minus a squared plus 2a squared is plus a squared. And then we've got minus a cubed plus a cubed goes away. So you'd have to 6 plus 3a plus a squared all over 2 minus a 4 plus 2a plus a squared and that's as far as you can do because this cannot be factorized the 6 plus 3a plus a squared cannot be factorized into anything that looks like that hmm nice question right so let's do this one this is a little bit more complicated because not only are we going to have to factorize and cancel but do you see there's a divide so what do we do? We know that when we're dividing by a fraction, what do we have to do? We need to tip and times. We need to tip and times. That's what we always get taught at school, tip and times. So what we're going to do is we're going to factorize the top of this and we're going to factorize the bottom of this. And we're going to tip and times and leave this as it is and just write it in the tip and times form and then we'll factorize. In fact, let's tip and times first just to make sure you understand. So we're going to write B squared plus 10b plus 21 all over 3b squared minus 9 and what do we do we tip and times this so it times and then the numerator now is 30b squared minus 90b all over 2b squared plus 14b okay now let's factorize so we're trying to factorize b squared plus 10b plus 21 so we've got b squared plus 10b plus 21. The factors of b squared are just going to be obviously b and b, which is pretty easy. The signs are both the same and they're both plus. So we need two factors of 21 that add up to 10. And the factors of 21 are 21 and 1 and 3 and 7. And there we go, 3 plus 7 is 10. So that's a 3 and that's a 7 all over. Do you agree that this year is a difference between two squares? The three stays here, but the b, b squared minus nine becomes b minus three, b plus three, times by. Now, what do we always say? We always say whenever we're looking to factorize something, we always look to take out any common factors. So do you agree that 30 goes into both 30 and to 90? So we can take out a 30. And there's a b squared and a b, so therefore, obviously, we can take out a b. And what are we left with? We're left with b minus 90 divided by 30 is 3. Okay? All over. All over. Again, we can take out common factors of 2. And the letters, we can take out a b. And we're left with b plus 7. Right, and now we get to exciting times. I get very excited when I can cancel, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. Because this is a, a multiplication sum, we can multiply across the brackets, okay? I mean, across the, the multiplication sign. So we can go B minus 3 cancels with B minus 3. We can go B plus 3 cancels with B plus 3. And B plus 7 cancels with B plus 7. And B cancels with B, okay? And 2 goes into 30 15 times, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. 
the correct answer for all of this after everything is just five. Sure. Okay, that's actually a very nice question. I like that question. Right, let's try again. Okay, so now we've got x squared plus 17, x plus 70 over 5 times by x squared minus 100, all divided by 3x squared plus 21x divided by 45x squared minus 150x. So you can see now what I said to you before, that we can start thinking about looking at factorization before we can simplify. Because this here is a trinomial, right? This here is the sum and difference of squares, sum and difference of squares. This here and this here, they are both common factors. So we can take stuff out of here and then see if we can't factorize things. But do you see that we have to factorize before we can simplify? So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to do is look at this bracket here and see if we can factorize it. So obviously, the factors of x squared are just going to be x and x because the coefficient of that is 1. Both the signs are the same and they're both positive. Now, we need something that adds up to 17 and when multiplied gives you 70. And I'm very sure that 7 and 10 will do it because 7 times 10 is 70 and 7 plus 10 is 17. Okay, cool. Now, this is the difference between two squares. It's x squared, there's 100, and there's a minus sign between them. So therefore, we can say that this becomes x plus 10, x minus 10. The reason we can say that is because this is the difference between two squares. Now, what do we do? When we see this divide band, what do we do? We tip and we're time. So I'm going to do that first. So this becomes 45x squared minus 450x all over 3x squared plus 21x. Okay, so before I do anything more, I'm going to cancel this out. Whee! Okay, now I'm happy. So let's rewrite out the first part of this because I can see that there's nothing there that will cancel. So it is 5 and x minus 10 times by. Can we take out any common factors in the top? And I'm tempted to take out a 5, but then I realize that 45 divided by 45 is 1, and 450 divided by 45 is 10, so actually I can take out a 45, and I can also take out a common factor of x. So what are we left with? We're left with x minus 450 divided by 45 is 10, all over 3x squared plus 21x, and do you agree the common factor there would be 3? and an x, and what are you left with? You're left with x plus seven. So hooray, I can again cancel. I can cancel x plus seven with x plus seven. I can cancel x minus 10 with x minus 10. The x cancels with the x. Five goes into 45 nine times, and three goes into nine three times. The correct answer is three. Yay! Okay. So again, like I said, if you know how to do your factorization, the simplification of fractions is actually quite easy, but you need to know how to do your factorization in order to do the simplification. Right, another example. Again, you've got a beautiful x cubed plus 27. Okay, and that's going to end up with being, because that's a difference of two cubes, well, it's just the sum of two cubes. So we know the sum of two cubes is going to be a cubed plus b cubed. It's going to be a plus b, and then what happens? It's a squared, change the sign, multiply the two terms, a, b, plus b squared. That is our rule, okay? So we can use that now in this bit here. And I'm actually going to do that first before I even try and factorize anything else because maybe there's something I can cancel. So I'm writing down x squared minus 3x plus 9 all over. The common denominator for this is, I mean, the factorization of this is the cube root of x cubed is x plus the cube root of 27 is 3. And then what do we do? We multiply, we square the first term, which becomes x squared. Okay, we 
put a minus sign there because it's opposite, and then we multiply these together, it becomes 3x. And then you square the last term, which is a 9, right? Plus x minus 2. Now we need to factorize this. So the factors of x squared is going to be x and x. Both the signs are the same and they both have to add up to 4. So that becomes a 1 and a 3 minus 1 over x minus 2. Now I know that there are going to be people out there who will go, oh, this is so nice and easy. Cancel, cancel, and then cancel whatever would that ever no you can only cancel when there are one fraction one fraction you can't cancel before that so we can cancel this with this because they're one fraction but that's it that's all we can do okay so now what can we do we now have a common denominator of x plus 3 x plus 1 x minus 2 hmm Okay, so obviously that's a 1. Please remember that that's a 1 because we divided them into each other and they left with a 1. So x plus 3 divides into x plus 3 leaves you with a 1. So we've got 1 times whatever's left, which is x plus 1, x minus 2. Plus these two into here leave you with x minus 2. So it becomes x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus x minus 2 into here leaves you with x plus 3, x plus 1. Right, now unfortunately for us, we need to multiply out these brackets. It's quite a long sum. This is at least 8 to 9 marks worth of questions, so we need to multiply it out. So, we're going to be using FOIL. And grade 10s, if you know how to multiply these out without using FOIL, in other words, with using the shortcut, which I'll explain to you now, um, that's fine. But I always show you FOIL because sometimes, even if you know the shortcut, you can sometimes go a little bit uh, in the exams and your brain doesn't work as well as it should. And then you can't remember how to do it. So if you know FOIL, then you A for a way. So the first term with the first term is x squared. Then we multiply them. The outers becomes minus 2x. The inners is plus x. And then it becomes minus 2. And in fact, that's exactly what I do when I do FOIL. I mean, when I do the shortcut. It's just that I do it in my head, so I do it faster. Okay, let's carry on. Then it becomes plus x times x is x squared, then it becomes minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x, plus 4, minus. Now, because of that minus, I'm putting a big bracket in front of this that I don't mess up, okay? So x times x is x squared, then plus 1x, plus 3x, plus 3. There we go. Right, so now we need to group things and then add like terms, okay? Well, we can already add like terms a bit. We've got x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Minus 2x plus x is just x. Minus 4x is minus 3x. Minus 2x plus 4 is plus 2. Then it becomes minus x squared. This becomes 4x, so it becomes minus 4x. And this becomes minus 3 all over, and I'm going to write denominator. Now, grade 10, you may not write the word denominator. You have to write it the whole thing. Okay, so now I need space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase some of this. Okay, not all of it, just some of it so that I can see what I'm doing. Sorry, I know this takes time. Right, so now I'm going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to carry on up here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add like terms. We've got 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared. Minus 3x minus 4x is minus 7x. Plus 2 minus 3 is minus 1 all over the denominator which is x plus 3 x plus 1 
x minus 2. And there's no way that we can factorize this to look anything like a trinomial and therefore we are finished with the sum. There we go. Sure. Okay, so I'm actually going to love and leave you at the moment. I know this is five minutes short of a 45 minute lesson, but I do feel that it would be better if we started exponents fresh on Monday. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to go through this video again and make sure that you can do these questions and make sure you can do the factorization and simplification of fractions and then go onto the Turnable platform. There are lots of questions. There are lots of multiple choice questions. There's a test, there's assessment that you can go and try and make sure that you understand what's going on. And grade tens, please join the Turnable maths group, okay, and that way you can actually make sure make send me messages and then you can say to me well actually i really don't understand this section or whatever please can you explain it so please go and join the turn able online math class have a great day